Imran, happy 2019 and welcome to back Thank to you Film so much. Companion. Thank you. So I keep hearing and reading that Cheat India is going to give us Imran Hashmi 2.0. I hope so. What, what is Imran Hashmi 2.0? I have no idea. <laughs> you said it. I'm guessing you'll see uh, a different, I mean, in its own, the positioning of the film, the way we've pitched it, the performance, the character of uh, Rakesh Singh, it's just a very different take. I've never done a film of this nature. The the industry hasn't uh, dabbled with the subject of the education system like this. And it just probably, I hope that the, the performance will, will grab people because it's not the traditional, the jingoism that we are known for. I mean, everything amped up. Mm. It's a real film. It's it's a real story, and hopefully it will it will suck everyone in and just teach teach them a, a, a thing or two. So. so is it is it for you in a sense a sort of new innings? Again, I'm hoping. I mean, see, for me, for all the films that I've done, they've been successful, and there comes a time in your life when you feel you have to phase out something, and it it, it has to do a lot to do with your experiences, your personal experiences. I'm not the same person I was five years back, yeah. and that reflects in the work that uh, an actor does also. It reflects in the choices you make. I want to do these kind of films, not that I will only do socially relevant, relevant films, I might also do like a love story or a comedy or whatever, but just phasing out from that one image that I had, and kind of getting into something else, into meteor roles and character based roles, I think that's what uh, I'm looking for, and I hope people like it. Uh, people accept me for that. It's a tough one when you have certain kind of films that work mm. and then you bid that goodbye and you want to really get on to something else, you know, and shift gears. There's a resistance from the industry and then you don't know, am I doing this right? Um, is it the right decision? I think it's the right decision because I am not that person. I wouldn't do sure. those kind of murders. They've, they've been great. Yeah. They have, they have really contributed to my career, but I think it's time to move on to other things. Also from, of course, the great serial kisser tag. Yes. Uh, um, this film, of course, also launches you 2.0, but launches your production company, Imran yeah. Hashmi Films. And it was very funny. I saw a statement you made in some interview where you said, no kissing films will be made under my banner. No, no, no. Did <laughs> this, I see that? I, did you see did? That? And I said, okay, that's a bit extreme. That, I know you're getting extreme. away from that image. Yeah, must have, that must have been a, the last day on the promotional campaign where I was really tired. <laughs> and I must have had an out-of-body experience and said something I didn't believe in. You know, I've, I've never gone to that extreme where I said I will not do it. It's just that, first of all, it's, it's lost that kind of the effect that it had. Sure. It's, uh, not provocative years, anymore. it's not provocative anymore. Absolutely. I mean, you don't have like YouTube and all of that uh, 15 years back. So there was this thing of let's go and watch it in the cinema halls. Right. right now, people want to see stories and people want to see good films, and that's yeah. about it. It was not then Cheat India, for sure, the kiss. I got conned into it by my other producers. You're kissing yeah, in Cheat no, yeah, India? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last year of shoot. Really? They actually pinned me down. They took me in the van and they said, they listen to me. Huh. You know? Yo, Imran, you, you can, need you to know, kiss. No, no, no. Let's do it. It's better than not doing it. Just let's scan it, hmm. right? And let's and see what? if we Make can use it. And then what? Make an edit choice. We, we are taking an edit choice. Huh. And there was a version of that which was so weird. And then I was like, no, no, let's let's do it this way. So the version that's there is like, okay, let, let, let it be the back. Let the camera be there. Let it be this, this very short and sweet moment. And then we then we got over with it. That was the last shot of the film, actually. Really? So, yeah. So I got conned into it. And then we put it into the film. Surprise, surprise. So there's just no getting away from it for you? Yeah, I don't think so. Really? I mean, I mean Dennis Tanovic put it up in, in Tigers. In Tigers, and right. He got caught into doing it. He's like, Iman is in the film. How can you not do this? Isn't that strange, Iman? It's, it's weird. It's, it's, it's amusing and at the same time it's frustrating. It's like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It what, is. 17 years, more than 40 films later, you still have to kiss? No, trust me. I, you don't know how tough it is. You don't know how tough it is. People don't feel my pain. <laughs> no one feels my pain. Okay, tell me about being a producer. Yeah. Uh, is that because you want to control the material you're in? Yes. What did you feel you were not getting? You know, there were a couple of films um, that didn't really turn out the way I thought they would. And that had to do a bit with not blaming anyone, but just as an actor, you're there only in that capacity. You come on the set, perform, you go back, probably come for marketing film to promote it. But then beyond that, you don't have much of a, you don't participate in things. So as a producer, I at least have, you know, I'm in charge of things where I can really nurture a project right from its uh, scripting to, to its ultimate fate to the release. And I'm there in the entire decision making process. So whatever the film is, good, bad, the entire onus is on me. Hmm. I made a mistake or I made a wonderful film, either or. 
and uh, I learned from it. That's why I got the, the obvious step uh, was to become a producer. I've been wanting to do this for the past four years. Cheat India happened, I got the script a year back and I was like, I would be very proud not to just be an actor in this, also to produce it. Then I got Ellipses on board. So they stand for you know different content, something that's out of the box, interesting, at the same time commercial, T-series, and then uh, we went ahead with this. But it's uh, it's <clears> a whole <throat> other kettle, I mean not a whole other kettle of fish, but it is a far more pressurizing job than being an actor, isn't it? You know, here, I, I wanted to take baby steps into it, that's why I got the partners in sure. on it, so, so I'm, not doing solely, I'm not solely uh, producing it. I have that help uh, with these guys. So I didn't feel the pressure in this one. I'm first the actor and of course I'm learning a lot of things right now. Uh, maybe in the next year I will start uh, solely producing films. Mm -hmm. Then I might feel the pressure even more. But yeah, I mean, let's see. Let's You've see enjoyed it. Goes. I've, I've really enjoyed it because I've been there in this film kind of from its inception, when it was a story and then we worked on the script, discussions yeah. with the director. The, the shoot, where we're going to shoot, then the you know the edit, and now the marketing. So I've been there in the entire process. Tell me, um, there are so many things about Cheat India that look like you're really sort of you you are pushing the envelope in terms of uh, you know just just the narrative you've got, and and you've been talking extensively in interviews about the education system, etc. Now, is it you know I'm always wondering like is this something you were interested in or is it an actor taking a position because you have to market a film mm. you know how how does this work well it starts off firstly with doing school here in this in this country so you have a first time having your schooling here yeah. and your college and then realizing how ineffective it has been mm -hmm. of how little you have learned and how much little real world application that has when you go out and look out uh, in any profession. And I didn't know that there was actually a cheating mafia in every state in the country. Mm -hmm. They give undeserving kids merits. Uh, they take money. They put these kids in this, in these, uh, give them merits and grades. And these very kids go ahead and become doctors, engineers. So imagine the doctor that is writing the prescription right. probably is not qualified. He's yeah. paid for his degree. That's the state of our country. And I felt that this is a very relevant film to our time. So you also, Imran said in an interview that how good your performance is in this industry depends upon your background music. Hmm. Uh, what did you mean? <clears throat> Were you taking the piss out of actors? I think the industry generally, I think the, it just comes back to the whole jingoistic culture in our industry. That what do you mean? Whipping up background music. Uh, we, we can't breathe in, in kind of silence generally in our films, right? I mean, if you see any film that has an evolved sense, I mean, any international cinema, whatever, I mean, even, even some directors and films here, you don't have to whip up the emotion in the audience by constantly infusing it right. with background music. Yeah. That's kind of cheating the audience, right? You're telling us what to feel. Yeah, you, 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 exactly. Yeah. But that's what you got to do because that's what's been happening here. And I hope, I hope it evolves into that, into something else. You have a silent frame that really, on, on the basis of its story and the performance, really pulls you into that world yeah. without drowning out with so many, so much noise and that's what our films are, like most of them. It's just it's a lot of noise, a lot of the amping up the background. Feel, feel, feel. We, we, we'll show you what to feel. Right. Don't feel for yourself. We'll tell you what you should feel. Feel happy here. Right. Feel sad here. And I just find that very amusing. I do. In what way? Just the way it is. Huh. So that's why I kind of, that was a quote that I said, that <laughs> acting in, in a lot of cases is a background music. You know, like that quote, I mean, I, I think you've always though you've done so much sort of hardcore mainstream yeah. cinema, you've always had some level of discomfort with it. Mm. I mean, at least that's the sense I get whenever I speak to you, right? Mm. I remember doing an interview with you maybe four or five years ago and we started talking about awards and you told me that you don't go for awards because you said they're not based on merit, it's all about appearance. Mm. And you said it's a cliche and I don't believe in cliches. Mm. But do you think that if you had played more by the rules mm -hmm. uh, of doing the awards sort of service yeah. and you know just kind of networking in yeah. the right way and maybe yeah. not having a problem with the background music. Yeah. Do you think your career would have shaped out differently? Probably. I, I don't look at things in retrospect. This is who I am. These are the choices I've made. Why would you look at something in retrospect when you don't believe in those things? Mm. So yeah, I stand by my decisions. This is who I am. I don't question who I am. The, the decisions I make uh, is based on 
just the thoughts, I mean, my ideology and, and just right. my thinking, my outlook to life. And that's what it is. There's no right or wrong. I'm not even saying background music is wrong. Yeah. I'm just saying this is my, what I feel. But I mean, for someone else, they might think I'm, I'm just talking garbage right now, which is fine. Mm -hmm. And each to their own. That's mm -hmm. how, that's the way it should be. Right. So I don't go to award ceremonies because of, of, of these things, because I mean, the, the, the merit is questionable. Yeah. But I will never diss out an actor who will go there and perform, get sure. an award. Oh, fine. I mean, it's, it's, okay. it's their world. It's fine. There's nothing but, wrong with but, it. You know, I wonder, I mean, you've done so many films that have been successful and you've done more than 40 films. Uh, you've done films like Shanghai, which were really critically acclaimed. It's one of my favorite performances of yours. Uh, um, you know, which showed how, what your range is and, and how far you are from that label of kissing serial kisser or whatever that was. And yet, Imran, when people talk about you, they talk about you as a man with a connect with the masses, uh, uh, you know, as a guy who's got a market in the B and C class centers. They don't say, oh, A-list star. Yeah. Um, does that bother you? I, I've never really understood what that means. Uh, I have initially pitched my films to that certain segment, the masses, mm. and it has really worked for me. Uh, the films clocked in the numbers and Earlier they were criticized and that those films became kind of money spinners and that was my market and then I kind of moved out, I, I wanted to try my hand at other things. Some of them were successful, some of them weren't. Uh, ultimately there are these labels which get attached to you that really, I mean for me it really doesn't have any significance. I mean ultimately I'm an actor, I want to do more films, I want to do different kinds of roles, performances. People will always try to box you up with their own uh, at least past references. Yeah. I might not fit into any of those references. I feel like so, you don't. So, so yeah. I, I, I don't even understand. I, I would never go by how they box me up into a certain certain category, because uh, I'm I'm trying my hand at a lot of things. I'm not going down a traditional roadmap. So all, all these things A, B, C doesn't really matter. This but you never arbitrary. felt like I'm a damn good actor. I deserve more. Well, I'm doing films that, that, that I, would, I would like. Yeah, to you're make. excited so, by what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. with what I'm doing. So I, I have no regrets. I mean, there's nothing that I feel. Yes, there's always a quest to do more, to do better films and to kind of uh, work in interesting, uh, get interesting concepts like Cheat India or, or uh, further on. But yeah, I think that that's any actor's greed. And you're also now, of course, on OTG platforms. Yeah. Uh, with Bard of Blood, you'll be doing your Netflix show. Yeah. Uh, as an actor, is that, do you feel like that might sort of open up a whole new avenue? Because I feel like for Seth with Sacred Games, that's almost a better fit for him mm. than Hindi cinema mm. is at this point. You mm. know, because I feel like his sensibility perhaps mm. is completely out of sync with, with what cinema was offering him. Yeah. Do you feel that's true for you? I think ODD platforms are great because you get to do the content that you probably won't be able to do uh, for the theatres here. Yeah. Because when you, when you pitch a film to the theatres, you have to play in the confines of a box, a certain rules that you abide to. And that's not true to OTT platforms. You're pitching it to 190 countries, mm. and it's more universal. Uh, the, the tone of the, of, the, of the films and web shows is very different. I'm a big fan of web shows. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's, not that I don't fit into the films here, but yeah, I probably am closer to that because my influences when I was growing up, they are closer to a certain westernized taste. Uh, I've had to kind of, it took me some time to kind of fit into a sensibility here. Uh, not that either or is not good, or, I mean, uh, Hindi films are good also, but this wouldn't have been, uh, couldn't have been made into a Hindi film, Bar of right. Blood. Right. The way it's been adapted and how we've kind of uh, jocked out these seven episodes. It's more tuned into a certain audience here, a certain segment, the Netflix segment, and also the international audience. So I'm, I'm happy I'm doing it. Is it sort of challenging as an actor for you? Of course it is. is do it's you have new, to sort of... It's a new experience. I mean, it's huh. like... Uh, but do you tone it down? I don't. I, is that the right way to frame it? I, I don't know if... Like, it is the acting doesn't have, different? It definitely doesn't have too much background music. <laughs> Uh, no prop there? It, it is required whenever it's required. Huh. It's not required all the time. But you pitch it at a lower I generally thing? pitch my stuff at a lower end. Right. Like right. even my jingoistic films, so to speak, huh. I, I don't go over those that decibel. Right. I, I, my, my body doesn't allow me. It doesn't. I can't. I just feel, I don't know, it just, it just stops. It just says pause right here. 
don't go above that because that's not it's you know you go in that borderline of you know being unreal and whatever correct so i'm easier with that mm. so not like i'm toning it down even more mm. i generally do it that way right like right. Uh, even the pitch in cheat india is on that very real key yeah. i've never gone above that because people don't talk that way yeah so you've like, never been a masala fan i mean i've grown up watching a lot of mr bachchan's films sure uh, i don't know if that reclassified as masala i loved shole yeah me too i don't know if that is that is that masala is that it's not it didn't yeah. it's it, there, there was a certain logic and sense to sure. it Yeah. It was not people overacting. There was no right. OTTing on things. No, there wasn't. So for me, that's masala. Yeah. But there is a certain kind of cinema where people are yelling. Right. And it's just going over that decibel. You know. The sort of demand nikal ke dekho. Yeah, the, I, 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 I don't get Can't that. Can't stomach I that. I, I don't get that. So let's go back to your production company, Imran Hashmi Films. You said uh, that uh, with your company, you you know you spoke very um, very sort of strongly for the Me Too movement, and you said in your company they're yeah. going to be contracts with sort of sexual harassment clauses in them. Um, you know. it's wonderful that you're addressing this kind of head on as the head of a production company what i've been hearing now for the last 2 months is is something that makes me sort of really concerned that actually what's happening is that more and more people are sort of becoming wary of hiring women because uh, so so it's almost like a backlash where they say mm. well you know if it's a role that can you know you can either have a man or a woman just hire the man because a woman might turn out to be too much trouble How do you think we can tackle something like this? I mean, that that's very unfortunate. I, yeah. I don't know which production company is doing no, that. No, it's just something you know. Wo urti urti khabar type. You know, you hear more and more people. It's the back of people's minds. I I know that couple of girls, you know, with whom these kind of incidences have taken place. Hmm. They have not voiced. They have not come out in the movement. Yeah. And what they said to me is that we didn't want to seem like we're a troublemaker. Yeah. And what happens then is that we won't get hired, and this is exactly what they say, and this is exactly what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is very unfortunate. I mean, in essentially a patriarchal society, I mean, there there have been these things which have happened, and and it was very shocking. Two months back, there were so many women coming on board and you know and and voicing what had happened to them. It was very important yeah. for that to happen. At least now, men will be slightly for one. You know, you, they can't cross the line because now. women can voice it on social sure. media that was a very important step mm. but i'm really unaware of this backlash mm. uh, but from what you're saying it probably is true because of some girls that i that told me that they also will not join the me too movement because they might seem like they'll you know uh, crossing the line yeah and seeming that way but it is unfortunate but it's it's still important it, it was is. important for for this no, to no, happen no no for it to have happened and for conversations to have begun Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, at least we're all talking about it. Yeah, yeah, completely, completely. I mean, at the same time, I mean, when when something happens on social media, it it, it almost becomes like a trial by social media, yeah. right? Uh, there there isn't any check per se, and that's sure. why with my production company, when I set out these rules, they actually government laws. Yeah. What really amounts to sexual harassment? Yeah. Because it, there's a gradation to what harassment is. I mean. For some people, it might not seem like harassment. For some people, it might. Yeah. It's a very cultural thing, also. Mm. So it it has to be set down by by the government, right? So that is why with my production company, I set down those sets set of rules that have to be signed by the people, by the by the men and the women on yeah. the team. And the men are forewarned, and then they kind of it protects uh, the the women on the crew. Yeah. And these are the rules, because it's pretty arbitrary there right now. Yeah. What is sexual harassment? Mm. And yes, some of most of the allegations might be true, but couldn't some of the allegations be a bit malicious yeah, yeah. to to settle scores? Absolutely. So, so yeah. you never know. I mean, yeah, people are being know. fired from companies. Is there any due process? It's very here? complex. Is yeah. there any due process? There's no due process. No yeah. one went to the cops, uh, and at the same time, does does the girl have a proof? That that's a, that's the other sad thing. Most of the cases, there's no proof. They can't be. So the, usually, two those, those lines room. are pretty blurred and yeah. pretty vague. So yeah. I'm, I'm guessing, like everyone's confused. I mean, I'm yeah. sure we'll we'll reach some kind of. Consensus. We don't really know how to deal with it. We don't really know. Yeah. So my favorite bit in your Cheat India trailer is is the line where he says. मुझे हीरो बनने की कोई इच्छा नहीं. विलेन बनने का बिल्कुल टाइम नहीं है. खिलाड़ी हूँ. खेल रहा हूँ. I feel like that's also true for you. Oh, is it? Is it? I'm gonna ask you. Is it? 
You know, I've, like, I've, like you've I've played your career, game. I've made a career of playing anti-heroes mm. and I've never seen those heroes as uh, heroes or villains. Sure. They're anti-heroes. I mean, at the end of the day, right. they do immoral things. But here's the thing. I mean, we are all the heroes of our own lives. So even the villain doesn't really know or believe that he's doing something wrong. Otherwise, Correct. he wouldn't have done it. Correct. So that's what Rakesh is. Yeah. And uh, I guess that that's what he's making a career out of in this film. And yes, yeah, somewhere I kind of dabbled with a little bit of somewhere in that gray space between the hero and the villain. Right, you've done it You can't always. really, uh, there's no defining line. Yeah. Uh, are, are these guys heroes or villains or, yeah, I, I guess they, you would call them anti-heroes. They, they, they're as real as it gets because no one's truly good or bad. Mm. We're, kind, we're kind of always, all of us, uh, shifting f from one end of the spectrum to the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good luck for the movie and thank you. Thank you so much, Imran. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Hi, this is Imran Hashmin. If you like this video, please subscribe to Film Companion.